Tally ho there champs and welcome to the show. Today I'll be comparing the XPS 15, the MacBook Pro Cabby Lake 15 inch model and the Zenbook Pro, the new Cabby Lake Zenbook Pro. Now I have reviewed the XPS 15 and the MacBook Pro, the previous MacBook Pro. You can check out those reviews if you want. I will have the new MacBook Pro in a couple of days and the Zenbook Pro is due early next month or something like that. So this is just a video comparing the differences between the three, the specifications, features and so on and I will do an updated video on this once I've reviewed all of them. So let's start with price. The XPS 15, $999 starts at $1299 the Zenbook Pro, and the MacBook Pro starts at $2400. Now this is US. If you want a decent configuration of the Zenbook Pro or the XPS 15, you're probably looking around 2 k and the same sort of spec'd out Mac will cost you over $3,000. So there's probably nearly a $1,000 difference. So basically you could buy another smartphone and buy a Zenbook and an XPS for the price of one Mac. In terms of design, well this is all subjective. They're all premium laptops made out of premium materials. So I think that's why they're all in the same class. I love the exterior of the MacBook Pro and its uniform thickness and the colour. And I love when you open up the XPS 15 you get that killer infinity edge display and that carbon fibre deck. It looks fantastic. And after so long no one has even matched the infinity edge there. And the Zenbook Pro I do like it. it's expensive two-tone sort of look. It's luster of that dark blue it's fantastic so if you're going to ask me between the xps 15 and the macbook pro i'd say the macbook pro's fit and finish is better and i'd say the xps 15's build quality is better and how robust it is so they're all good which one's better for you you're going to have to decide yourself so in terms of weight and size they're all more or less the same size in footprint other than you know different aspect ratios and so on but the xps 15 starts at four pounds which is 1.8 kilos the macbook pro is 1.83 kilos or four pounds and the zenbook pro is 1.8 kilos or 3.97 pounds so the zenbook pro is fractionally lighter they're all more or less the same weight except you can get the xps 15 with the big battery which makes it 4.5 pounds or 200 grams heavier because the MacBook Pro and the ZenBook Pro have fairly small battery. Well, not small, but they're definitely a lot smaller than the XPS 15 big battery. In terms of thickness, the XPS 15 is 11 millimeters to 17 with that tapered design. So 17 millimeters at its thickest point. The MacBook Pro is 15.6 millimeters and the ZenBook Pro is 18.9 millimeters. Now, the reason that ZenBook Pro is thicker at 18.9 millimeters, I think would be because it has a GTX 1050 Ti. It needs extra cool in room and so on so the xps 15 is like 1.4 millimeters thicker than the macbook pro and the zenbook pro is over three millimeters thicker than the macbook pro in terms of ports i would definitely say the zenbook pro would have the best port configuration ever if it had a full size sd card reader but it doesn't it only has micro sd and i'm so annoyed it was so close to being perfect but anyway it has two four times Thunderbolt ports, two USB 3.1s, that's 3.1, so that's USB-C speeds there, it's not USB 3, micro SD card reader, and HDMI 1.4 port, and an audio jack. The XPS 15 has one two times Thunderbolt 3 port, two USB 3 ports, a HDMI 1.4, and one full-size SD card slot. Now that works out perfect for me personally because I need that full-size SD card slot. And when we go onto the Mac, you have four Thunderbolt 3 ports. And this is the thing that people hate the most about the Mac. I get messages every day, people complaining, and most of all, it's because of those lack of ports there. And look, I'm not trying to belittle that. That's four times Thunderbolt 3 ports. That's a lot of PCI lanes, a lot of bandwidth there, but it's not practical. It doesn't meet anyone's needs. It's just annoying to have all those dongles. So here I'd still give the Zenbook Pro the ports, but if it had that full SD card, it would be perfect. And yeah, and the XPS 15, that's great port selection too. It would be nice for a four times Thunderbolt 3 or even more in the future, hopefully, but um, it's still a great port selection. Now, all of them have seventh generation Cabby Lake processors. The only difference here is with the Mac, you can get up to the 3.1 gigahertz model, whereas the Zenbook and XPS 15 have 7700 HQ, and that's the only one you can get, which is 2.8 gigahertz. The Mac, you can get the 3.1. Really, it's not that much difference, and the last Mac actually was very hot and throttled, so maybe you wouldn't even get the full speed. We'll find out in a couple of days. The Mac comes with DDR3 16 gigabytes maximum. The Zenbook Pro has 16 gigabytes maximum too. 
and the XPS 15 has 32 gigabytes and it's replaceable too. XPS 15 comes with a GTX 1050, which is a 50 watt part. MacBook Pro comes with an RX 560, which is a 35 watt part. And the ZenBook Pro comes with an impressive GTX 1050 Ti, which is actually a 70 watt part. That's probably why it's thicker there, that's 70 watts there. And you can get one terabyte SSDs on the XPS 15 and the ZenBook Pro, and you can get up to two terabytes on the MacBook Pro. Now MacBook Pro use their own proprietary connection there to their SSD. They even use their own controllers. You cannot upgrade that. It's unsure whether you can upgrade the ZenBook Pro one. I can't tell. There's no specifications for it at the moment on the video. I'm not sure. I can't see if that's a M.2 SSD or not. But certainly the XPS 15, you can upgrade the RAM and you can upgrade the SSD. And it has 32 gigs RAM versus 16 gigs of the MacBook Pro and the ZenBook Pro. So if you're a video editor and need more than 16 gigs RAM, well, the XPS 15 is the only one here. But if you're a gamer, that 1050 Ti in the ZenBook Pro, that's the one for you. However, the XPS 15 with the GTX 1050 runs pretty much any game 60 frames per second at high settings. So considering they all have 60 hertz monitors, any frames per second over 60 frames is superfluous and I can't really tell the difference between high and ultra most of the time anyway. But you may be able to get some 1440p gaming out of the 1050 Ti. I'll have to wait until I get the ZenBook in to see. And in terms of video editing between a 1050 Ti and a 1050, there won't be that much difference in video editing. And in terms of graphics, the RX 560 in the MacBook Pro, it's not going to be very good for Premiere and After Effects, but if you use Final Cut, it'll be okay. But really, in Premiere, it's not going to have the best performance won't be optimized for it. and for gaming forget about it in terms of display the xps 15 has a 350 nit 4k touchscreen with gorilla glass 100 adobe rgb macbook pro has a 15.4 inch 16 by 10 ratio 500 nit 100 p3 gamut display and the zenbook pro has a 4k touch display with 100 srgb now you can get full hd versions on the zenbook pro and the xps 15 but talking about the high-end models of all of them the XPS 15 will have the better display out of all of them. It has the wider color gamut. P3 is a wide color gamut as well, but the MacBook Pro is not 4K. It does get brighter, however. It's about 90% Adobe RGB, and the XPS 15 is around 93% P3. So it still has a wider color gamut, and it's 4K, the XPS 15. The ZenBook Pro, we're going to have to wait and see how good that is, but it's only 100% sRGB. So it's got a much more narrower or smaller color gamut compared to the MacBook Pro and the XPS 15, but it does have 4K resolution, which is higher resolution than the MacBook Pro. Keyboards and trackpads, well, this is subjective, but I would say the MacBook Pro keyboard sucks in my experience, and a lot of people think it sucks. Their trackpads are good on the MacBook Pros, but a lot of people hate the big one that's on the MacBook Pro. XPS 15 has a decent keyboard. The trackpad is really good. It's not as good as Mac, but then again, some people hate the Mac one because of its palm rejection. ZenBook Pro will have to wait and see. In terms of sound, the MacBook Pro has better sound than the XPS 15, that's for sure. The XPS 15 has decent sound and the ZenBook Pro is, is supposed to be having a big sound upgrade. So hopefully that can match the Mac or maybe even be better. We'll have to wait and see on that. In terms of battery and battery life, the XPS 15, you get around 10 hours on the Full HD. You'll get around seven, seven and a half hours on the 4K model. It has a 97 watt hour battery. It has the biggest battery out of them all. The MacBook Pro has a 76 watt hour battery. I got around seven hours battery on that. So it's equivalent to the 4K model on the XPS 15 with the big battery. And the ZenBook Pro has a 73 watt hour battery. So it has the smallest battery. You don't have to be a genius to work out that it's gonna have the worst battery life out of the three. 73 watt hours on a 4K screen. If I had to estimate five hours, maybe on the 4K, maybe seven hours on the Full HD. That's just speculation, but I doubt it will get better battery than either the MacBook Pro or the XPS 15. So that's it, guys. That's just comparing the features, the specs, the differences between the three. We'll have the MacBook Pro in a couple of days, and when that ZenBook Pro comes out, I will be reviewing that, and then I'll do another comparison more in-depth. If this video was helpful, give me a thumbs up there. I've got lots more tech content coming soon, and until next time, guys, tally-ho.